Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt DeSorbo, covering the algebra lessons for Skew the Script. Today, we'll be discussing rational functions and asymptotes, specifically in the context of the American healthcare system. Without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome to lesson 8.1 in the Skew the Script algebra series. Today's discussion will cover rational functions and asymptotes. Specifically, let's check out this video of UK citizens estimating US healthcare costs. You tell me how expensive you think calling an ambulance out to your location is in America. I guess it depends on like where you live. <laughs> uh, it really does. Um, okay. Is there a price for that? Yes. Jeez, um, $100, $200? Two and a half grand. For what? Why? <laughs> Why? So two EpiPens, okay. how much do you reckon they are? Eighty dollars. Six hundred. A hundred? Two hundred? Dollars. Yeah. Uh, the average is about ten grand. It can go up to thirty thousand. Ten grand! <laughs> For a baby! So, as you can see from that video, in many developed nations, uh, costs like ambulance, uh, ambulances, medicines, inhalers are zero dollars. However, uh, the average cost in America is much higher, fifteen dollars, fifteen hundred for an ambulance. Um, medicines can cost up to two hundred dollars or around there. Inhalers also expensive. Um, so our key analysis today: um, Should the American government do more to make healthcare affordable? If you'd like to follow along with the lesson, check out the link below. Feel free to print or download the guided notes and work through them as we work through the video. We'll be starting with a discussion on ratios and percentages. Um, so uh, kicking things off in the context of health insurance, according to Kaiser, Kaiser, which is a large health insurance company, people paid about $1,200, $1,242 on average for their health insurance in 2019. This doesn't include co-pays or medical costs that are not covered by insurance. So let's think about how much of a burden is paying that amount, that $1,242. Well, it all depends on your income. For example, for billionaire Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, uh, this is basically like nothing. For many Americans, though, this $1,242 can be a big expense. How can we quantify this burden? One way is to get the expense of healthcare as a percent of people's income. So, for example, let's say you make $100,000 per year, which this would put you in the top 8% of U.S. income earners, a.k.a. you are wealthy at this level of income. Um, what percent of your income is $1,242? Well, we have to take $1,242 out of $100,000. Um, this out of basically means we're taking a ratio. So $1,242 over $100,000 comes out to 0 0.012. Um, we can move the decimal place over two spots to get to 1.2%. Um, that is, you're, you'll be spending about 1% of your income on health insurance. However, let's say you make about $36,000 per year, $35,977. What percent of your income is $1,240 now? Um, uh, this number, it looks random, but it is the median individual income of the United States in 2019. Um, so again, let's take 1242 out of 35,977. Um, again, this out of means we want a ratio. So we put the uh, 1242 over 35,977, uh, we divide and we get 0 0.035, uh, which again comes out to 3.5%. So you'd be spending about 3.5% of your income on health insurance at this income level. Finally, let's say you make $12,760 $12, per year. What percent of your income is $1,200 now, $1,242 now? Um, this number, this 12,760, is the individual poverty line in the United States in 2020. So if you make below this number, you are officially below the poverty line. Um, so again, uh, we take our ratio, 1242 divided by 12,760 comes out to 0 0.097, which also is 9.7%. So that's almost 10% of your income, which is a hefty chunk spelt on health and spent on health insurance. An even better measure of this burden um, is the percent of disposable income. Uh, disposable income is basically the income left over after spending on basic necessities. So let's assume someone only spends money on the basic necessities. Um, you rent a low cost apartment for $500 a month. You only eat groceries. You don't go to restaurants. So you pay $50 a week. 
You use a bus pass for transit, which is $60 a month, and you have some miscellaneous necessities, soap, toothpaste, et cetera, which comes out to $150 a month. That equals a staggering total of $11,120 per year, just for the most basic of necessities, not including sort of anything else. Um, so now we should calculate the cost of healthcare as a percent of disposable income for each income level. So again, we have poverty line, uh, median income, and the wealthy. Um, we subtract the cost of basic needs for, for all of these, so $11,120. Um, we're left with uh, this disposable income for each of these different brackets. Um, and now we take the, uh, the ratio as the healthcare cost uh, to the disposable income. So uh, we put 1242 over all these numbers, and we get um, these different percentages. Note that for uh, those below the poverty line, that's more than three-fourths of their disposable income. 75.7% of their disposable income would be spent on healthcare in this scenario. That's why uh, the United States has Medicaid for low-income people, which we will discuss later in this section. Now we'll turn to rational functions. Uh, rational functions are functions that have X in the denominator of a ratio. Um, so you can kind of see ratio, uh, rational, that's sort of uh, why it's named that way. Um, to actually do this, we'll construct a model of percent of income, which is our Y variable, spent on healthcare as a function of our income, which is our X variable. Again, we'll continue to use 1242 as the cost of healthcare per person. So again, Y is the percent of income spent on healthcare. Um, and therefore, Y is the ratio of healthcare cost to income. Um, so uh, again, healthcare cost is 1242, income is going to be X. So we have Y equals 1242 over X. Again, 1242 is the healthcare cost and X is the income. We can construct our handy dandy table where we have income, the X value, and then the percent spent on health, uh, Y. Um, uh, we can use 100,000 for X, plug in, 1242 divided by 100,000 equals about 1.2%. As we saw earlier, we fill it into the table. So again, to reiterate, a person making $100,000 a year would expect to pay about 1% of their income on healthcare. Uh, we can move on and plug in $75,000 for X, plugging in 1242 divided by $75,000, about 1.7%, divided by $50,000 for the next uh, uh, row is about 2.5%, divided by 25,000 is about 5%. Um, and now that we're uh, getting smaller income levels, uh, watch just how quickly these next values are going to rise. So if we plug in $12,500, which again is close to the poverty line, we get 9.9%, which is already a big jump um, from $25,000. If we plug in $5,000, we get 24.8%, which is another big jump. If we plug in $1,000, we see that the cost of healthcare is actually greater than income. Therefore, we're gonna, we would have to spend over 100% of income on healthcare, 124%. Huge jump from a $5,000 income to a $1,000 income. Finally, if we plug in $500, we get a really crazy number. For an income of $500, you would have to spend 248% on healthcare. And obviously, uh, that is the largest jump in percent of income that we've seen in this table. We can construct a graph of this table only using uh, positive axes, income per year on the x axis, percent of income spent on health on the y axis. Um, and you can, uh, for all these rows, we just kind of put the dots in based on the X and Y values. And you can see, uh, we can draw our line here. It takes a very distinctive shape. Um, and we can now think uh, sort of what happens. So what happens to Y's income gets smaller and why does this happen? Um, well, think about the reverse. Uh, what happens to Y's income gets bigger and why does this happen? Um, and to kind of lead to that discussion, we'll be talking about asymptotes. Um, so. Returning to our chart, uh, we're going to ask the question as, as uh, X is getting smaller, do we reach the Y axis? So over here, you see our point where X equals $500 and we're very close to our Y axis of percent income. Um, you can see zoomed in here, uh, the dot is very, very close to the Y axis, but it's not touching. So it's super close, but doesn't quite hit the Y axis. In fact, it will never touch the Y axis. It's going to get super, super close, but never going to touch it. Um, and this is where our discussion of asymptotes will begin. So remember, we have y equals 1242 divided by x. Um, we have our y-axis in orange. Um, the y-axis is where x equals 0. Um, and you can see that if we take x equals 0 and plug it into our equation, 
we get y equals 1240q divided by zero, but we cannot divide by zero. That's just a mathematical principle. Um, maybe one day you will figure out how to divide by zero, but so far we don't know. Um, so we cannot reach the y-axis currently because y cannot be zero, because x, sorry, we can't reach the y-axis because x cannot be zero in this equation. If we plug in x equals, equals zero, this equation does not work. So x equals zero is an asymptote, a line that our function will approach, but will never touch. Um, similarly, uh, let's look at y equals zero on the x-axis. Um, so again, y equals zero in our equation. Imagine plugging in zero. Um, this looks okay. So how, but how would we actually solve this? So we have zero equals 1242 divided by X. We multiply both sides by X, which gets, uh, cancels out the X on the right side, but the left side is X times zero. And uh, now we have to divide to isolate X. We have X times zero equals 1242. We have to divide both sides by zero. Uh, the zero on the left cancels out, but on the right side, we can't divide by zero. So again, if we set up the zero equals 1242 divided by X, this makes you divide by zero. It doesn't work. We get an asymptote. We cannot reach the X axis because Y cannot be zero in this equation. Well, again, uh, the X axis is an asymptote. A line our function will approach, but will not touch. Finally, let's think about uh, horizontal translation in these charts. So consider a rational function. We construct a model of percent of disposable income, not just income, disposable income, spent on healthcare as a function of income X. Again, we have the same healthcare cost, 1242. We have the basic needs cost, which we discussed earlier, groceries, rent, utilities of $11,120. Again, rational function means constructing a ratio. So we take Y equals the healthcare cost divided by disposable income. Um, and a disposable income, remember, is total income minus those basic needs. Um, so again, 1242 is the healthcare cost. X is the income. Basic needs are $11,120. So we have our function. Um, so now let's take our original graph and describe the transformation that occurred in the new graph. We have this new uh, chart, remember, which includes the uh, cost of basic needs, and we have our new function. You can see our original function overlaid in the dotted line. What happened? Well, our function was translated to the right, translated to the right by 11,120 units, in this case, dollars income per year. Um, subtracting from X, in this case, uh, translates the function right, um, and now we can actually look and write the equation of the new vertical asymptote. So we clearly have a vertical asymptote. It's some value for X, but what is it? So we have to think, what value of X would make us divide by zero in this equation? Well, 11,120, obviously minus 11,120, of course, equals zero. So if X equals 11,120, we would have a, a, an asymptote at that point. And you can see that circle there. If we subtract those, we're going to get zero in the denominator, which is not okay, which means we have a vertical asymptote at 11,120. Let's turn to our discussion for these topics. So reviewing disposable income again, uh, you can need it for a variety of things, buying new clothes, emergency spending, holiday gifts, traveling to see family, or just going out to eat. However, experts uh, simultaneously uh, make the claim that you should spend no more than 10% of your disposable income on healthcare. However, that introduces a problem because for many low income individuals, healthcare may actually be a huge percentage of that disposable income. Um, to kind of counteract this, uh, the Affordable Care Act, also called Obamacare, was a huge healthcare law that was passed in 2010. Among other things, it expanded Medicaid, which provide provides government subsidized healthcare to low income individuals. Um, basically, one of the uh, facets, one of the things it did was to expand Medicaid eligibility. All citizens making $16,970 or less in $2020 could qualify for Medicaid. And in many states, eligibility used to be much lower. Still, um, nearly 29 million Americans have neither Medicaid nor health insurance as of 2020. So that brings us to our discussion. Uh, point A, why are so many Americans still uninsured? Uh, provide evidence for your answer using the disposable income rational function, which we've shown here, and the graph, which is also shown here. And a hint here is recall uh, what experts uh, said. You should spend no more than 10% of your disposable income on healthcare. So use that hint um, when you're answering the discussion question. Then discussion question, discussion question part B, um, expanding Medicaid further would require higher taxes. 
Uh, on the back of that, would you still support raising taxes for the purpose of expanding Medicaid? Why or why not? Something to discuss with your classmates. That's all, that's all for today's session. We'll see you next time on Skew the Script.